Hey Audacious Church, how you doing? My name is Rafaro. If you don't know me, I'm based here in Manchester and I've got the privilege of, you know, leading, pastoring, overseeing, advocating for and serving our young adult ministry. So shout out to all my young adults. Thank you for being here right now. God bless you, God keep you, God love you. Uh, I'm sure you've loved the last couple of days of praying and fasting and I'm sure you've heard God, are hearing God and will continue to hear God or how he wants to work in you, through you, and for you, for not just even just now, but for the whole of your life. But hey, without further ado, let's get straight into the word of God. So if you read with me, Acts 2 verse 17, in the last days, God says that I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, young men will see visions, and old men will dream dreams. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So we've walked into the scene right now. Um, Jesus has come back and he's gone again. But he said, don't worry, I will leave you with another, the Holy Spirit. And this is the day of Pentecost. So they're beginning to speak in tongues. They're beginning to, you know, the tongues of fire upon their head. And there's a lot of commotion and chaos. And people are like, these guys are drunk. These guys are crazy. What's going on? All of this stuff. But then Pete, they're kind of like, you know, a scene from a movie emerges from the background. He's like, no, no, no. This isn't drunkenness. This is the fulfillment of the prophecies of God. And what the verse that we just read there, though it's in Acts, actually, is Peter quoting the prophet Joel, saying that in the last days, God pours out a spirit, you know, prophecies will come, young men will dream. We'll see, we'll see visions and old men will dream dreams. But I want to let you know that we're still part of that church. The early church began here with Peter and the disciples, but actually... There exists an unbroken chain of Pentecostal believers present until we get here today in 2024. We're still living in the aftermath of this one day. Praise be to God for that. That means those visions, those dreams, that power, that purpose, that conviction, that breath, those gifts, those impartations are still available for us today. So I need your help to pray for our young adults today if that's all right. See, when I think about this verse, I still see that many of our young adults, in fact, all of our young adults, were probably in the beginning portion of that verse where it says that young men will see visions. And if I let you, if I may let you in into my team and the way that we talk and discuss things, that our definition of failure for the young adult ministry is for these guys to go about their days, you know, going through the motions, coasting through life, you know, stuck in this rat race, living without any purpose or vision, and just life is just happening at them and to them, not with them and by them, if that makes sense. And I get this kind of from Proverbs 29, you know, where it says, you know, people without vision, they perish. So lest our young adults perish, that, that cannot happen, not on our watch, not on our thing. That's why you and I are here right now to stand in the gap, to succeed for them, to pray for them and believe that actually there'll be people of conviction, of power, of direction, and that God will position them for influence and all these great things in their families and their friends and their careers and their cities and their all that kind of stuff. The vision is the thing that makes a difference. So the first thing we're going to pray for is, is for vision. And I've broken this down into three quick points. Number one, the Holy Spirit would give them vision for their lives. This is the ability to lead extraordinary, revelatory lives with God-given purposes, with God-given power, authority, all of this kind of thing. Number two, that our young adults would be hope-filled, hope-driven people of faith, that they would hold on to and believe in the promises of God, that they will come to pass, that God does not mince his words, but when he says something, it will come to pass. That's number two, our, that our YA would be hope-driven people of faith. Number three, that our YAs would find themselves in positions of influence, whether it's in their families, their relationships, their family, their friends, sorry, or in their industry, whether it's sports, media, business, finance, accounting, geology, UN, healthcare, whatever it is, that our young adults will find themselves in positions of influence. So number one, the Holy Spirit gives them vision. Number two, that our young adults will remain people of faith. And number three, that our young adults will be in positions of influence. Now, what I've also noticed is that, you know, as Christians sometimes go through life and get a little bit older and that, you know, life is a funny way of beating you down. You grow tired, you grow weary, you get a little bit bitter and, you know, it, life steals your ability to dream. But when you read that verse, it says, no, old men will dream dreams. And that's why I want to pray over our young adults. I want to future proof our young adults that they will be known as the joyful generation. 
that as they grow in their old age and maturing in their stage of life and all of that, that they would continue to access and live in the power of the Holy Spirit and not fall to bitterness, to weariness, to tiredness. So the things that I love for us to pray for here is number one, uh, I guess number four, if you're thinking about it in total, praying for the fruit of the Spirit to be present and available for them, especially joy. I believe that they are going to be a joyful generation. And when they grow older, they do not grow bitter, resentful, tired, weary, but no. They grow powerful, more faithful, full of stories, full of like, hey, in my day and age, we've seen, we've tasted and seen of the goodness of God here in the land of the living. That's what I want to pray for. The next thing, number five, is that their language, their action, that their attitude would remain faith forward. So again, speaking against all of this bitterness and tiredness and weariness and just negativity that... Not all, not audacious old people, um, but, you know, some old people can maybe get. Number six, that the Holy Spirit will continue to refresh them daily. And then number seven, that they never stop dreaming. That even in their old age, that our young adults would continue to hope and dream and see of what God is up to. That they never lose that sensitivity, that power or that God is on the move always. He was in the move in their 20s. He's on the move in their 40s and will be on the move in their 80s as well. Guys, thank you so much. Seven things to pray for. I'm sure you can find the written devotion to keep up with that. But please stand with me. Stand for our young adults. Intercede for them. I love them and I know you do. But hey, today is the day that they will be a joyful generation. That they shall taste and see of the goodness of the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit has come, given them vision, and he will continue to give them dreams. God bless you. We love you. And I'll see you soon. Bye.